Madam Secretary, please do the roll call. Uh, thank you and hello everyone. Rachel Anger is present. Kathy Calhoun. Present. John Kalilla. Present. Kenny Curley. Here. Pam Delabar. Here. Kathy Dunham. Here. George Eigenhauser. Here. Mark Hannon. Here. Yukiko Hayata. Here. Carol Krasnowski. Here. Rich Maston. Here. Melanie Morgan. Here. Pam Moser. Here. Paula Noble. Here. Sharon Roy. Here. Michael Shelton. Here. Russell Here. Webb. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Annette Wilson. Here. And we have Eileen Tartaglia. Here. Shelly Perkins. Here. James Simbro. I'm here. From the ID, uh, we have Matt Wong. Here. Is Eva Chen on the call? Is there anyone on the call as a panelist whose name I have erroneously omitted? Uh, thank you. We uh, appear to be, I have a quorum. I'll turn it back to the president. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Meeting is now called to order. Welcome all to the December 6, 2022 CFA Board of Directors meeting. Uh, board members, may I have any additions and changes to the orders of today agenda? Rachel? Uh, to be moved to executive session, our agenda items number 13, clerking, number 16, uh, the hearings, and 18A, the show date request. Okay, thank you. Pam Delabar. Um, we have unfinished uh, business. I guess it's supposed to go under new business, the uh, question and consideration for 44 Gotti and their request for an exception to policy that should come under new business. Okay, thank you, Ms. Delabar. Uh, Ms. Wilson. Thank you. Um, we can uh, remove uh, item number six, the brief and standards report, and we'll move it to the February board meeting. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Does anybody else have any changes or additions? Okay, may I have a motion to accept the orders of the day? I'll move. George, thank you. May I have a second? Delabar second. Pam Delabar, thank you. Are there any objections to this evening's orders of the day? Seeing no objections, orders of the day are approved. Ms. Anger, we're gonna go to ratification of online motion. Thank motions. you. Uh, we have uh, motions one through 11 on the screen. You will not see number 10. That was executive session. Uh, I, and I would move for ratification of the results of those uh, motion reportings. Carol, second. Thank you, Carol. Is there any discussion on the online motions for ratification? Rachel? Uh, that obviously um, acknowledges that number eight failed. So my motion does not include for that one to be ratified, obviously. Okay, uh, do we have number eight on the screen? <clears throat> it's there. Okay. And number five failed as well. Okay, thank you. Are there any other discussions? Are there any objections? Seeing there are no objections, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Anger. Mark Cannon. Can we make uh, the report on the screen larger? I can't read it and I suspect that some of our audience can't read it. Thank you, Mark. Aline, can you accommodate Mark Cannon's request. Um, yes. 
Is that better? It's I better for me. Mark, is it better for you? I can't make it much bigger than that. He's shaking his head yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on. The virtual cat competition is on the agenda next. Aline, can you bring Nancy Kerr in? Yes. Okay. Oops. Hi, Nancy. Can you hear me? Hi, Nancy. Can you hear me? Okay, we can see you talking, but we cannot hear you. There's got to be a setting on her end to turn the audio on. Nancy, we still cannot hear you, so I'm going to continue. I want to thank you for your report and thank you for being available. And if you're unable to connect with your sound, um, we will direct questions for Kathy Dunham to answer. Um, Nancy and Kathy, there are no action items on here at this time. The one action item you have will be addressed under Kathy Calhoun's budget committee report. Does the board have any questions for Nancy and or Kathy Dunham on the report? Okay, I do not see any questions. Nancy, I wanna thank you for your report and will you be able to be available to address any questions during Kathy Calhoun's budget report? She said yes, okay. Thank you, Nancy. I don't know what time that will be, but it will be later um, during the meeting. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to the entry clerk program. Kathy Dunham. Yes. Uh, as you can see, uh, I am happy to answer any questions. And there is one motion that I will um, read and then happy to answer questions about that. Motion to approve the beta test for an electronic catalog at three shows. Okay, may I have no. a second, please? Melanie, so, second. Seconds. seconds. Okay, I heard Melanie the loudest. So Melanie, you got that one. Okay, open for discussion. Kathy, I do not see any uh, discussions. Um, is there any objections to Kathy's motion and Melanie's second? Seeing no objections, the motion, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Kathy, thank you. Okay. Um, Kathy, don't go too far because you're up next. Uh, we're gonna move on to- um, Rich, I have my hand up. I'm sorry, Pam, go ahead. Um, Kathy and I have had a few emails over the entry clerk program. And I know that there's going to be a um, um, show rule brought up um, on um, the use of the CFA website on entry form. Uh, I have given the board 
uh, previously some ideas on the different characters that um, are used, especially over here in Europe. Um, it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to use this, um, not myself particularly, but those that do not speak English as a first language. And um, so basically, I want to know how many languages will our instructions be in? Um, and um, how are we going to deal with the, uh, uh, our weird, excuse me, le uh, letters that we have in, in names and um, sentences. We have a variety of country codes, which in addition to our own area codes um, and the timestamps on the entry form. So what I am really concerned about is if we have a problem and it's all caused by one of these differences that uh, I've just brought up. Uh, the time differences, sometimes we find that there's nobody we can go to for help. Kathy Dunham, do you want to address the question? Uh, sure. Um, Pam, we're, uh, I, after our discussion today online, uh, I did talk with Aline and uh, we are starting the process to investigate the situation that you're referring to is not only for the entry clerking program, but I think it is a system wide uh, mm -hmm. issue as uh, I understand it. And um, uh, we're bringing James uh, Simbro into the conversation. And uh, after this meeting and most likely after the holidays, because everybody is going various places, uh, we will start meetings and uh, try to resolve this situation for you and try to give you some ability for your entry clerks to ask questions or be able to get a hold of somebody. Um, I know that's difficult at times because of the time zones, but we will do our very best to accommodate what we certainly can. Uh, some of it might be obsolete by the time we get to the potential use of ECATs to be able to enter shows, but uh, we are more than happy to try and accommodate anything that uh, uh, the regions eight, nine, or the ID division need to make this process easier. Kathy, uh, and I had talked about the um, getting some of my smart entry clerk people uh, to work on this because I have not used the CFA entry uh, uh, clerk program um, in this iteration of it. Um, and you brought up another problem was that we have, CFA is the new guy over here. We have been getting most of our, our people coming in to our CAD shows came from other organizations. Again, we're dealing in most cases with people who do not speak English as a first language. And then we're going to ask that people uh, who even want to try CFA, and we're not getting them to try to leave their association. They're trying. We're trying to get them to add us. Um, we then would require them to sign up for ECAT to put their entries on through ECAT when, in fact, it's difficult for them to follow those directions. So this is something I, I want you to be aware of. And, um, um, and by the by, we, we, I have been to several uh, shows over here that use the uh, electronic uh, uh, catalog and people love it over here. So that's a plus for Europe. <laughs> we love the electronic catalog. <laughs> we're, we're gonna do our utmost, Pam. Um, Aline and I already started the discussion this afternoon. Uh, and we realize that there are language barriers and that you have a unique situation. So uh, we are going to try our hardest to incorporate some of those uh, unique situations to try and help all of you and uh, CFA move into an electronic age with entry clerking and uh, doing entries. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Mr. Eigenhauser. 
I have concerns that this may not be ready. While I appreciate that Kathy can work on solutions for the non-English speaking people, working on a solution isn't the same as having a solution. And I would prefer that solution be in hand before we apply this outside of regions one through seven. Perhaps what we should do is try this in regions one through seven first, get a feel for how it works. And if we work out the bugs for Europe and the ID and, and places where people don't speak English, we can add them on later. But let's not add them on now and say, I hope we fix this in time. That, that seems like we're putting the cart before the horse. Kathy, do you want to address George's recommendation? Um, I, I'm in absolute agreement. Um, and may I just amend? Well, I haven't even read the motion. Can I just make the motion the way it needs to be made? Make the motion the way you want to make it. Motion. Uh, all entry clerks in regions one through seven be required to use the CFA entry clerking program beginning May 1st, 2023. Okay, may I have a second, please? Web second. Thank you, Russell. Okay, I have a motion by Kathy Dama, a second by Russell Webb. Mark Cannon. Yeah, I don't think this is going to have much of an impact. Allie has told us before that. Uh, very few people uh, use a different entry clerk software. Um, we're talking about the software, right? Correct, Mark. Oh, yeah, um, I know Shirley Pete uses it. Um, Debbie Cousy used to use it, but now she's using Shirley as an entry clerk for her show. Um, I've talked to Clinton about it and he, he's fine with it. Uh, he said with, with so few customers, he said he has a lot of work to change this every year to accommodate, you know, new breeds or divisions or whatever. Um, and he's not really making any money off of it. So he's he's the, the entrepreneur that's providing the alternate entry clerk software. And he's he told me he didn't have an issue with it. Thank you, Mark. Ms. Morgan. Thank you. Um, so I'm confused. I thought that I saw an email earlier from Pam uh, Delabar, that the majority of the entry clerks in Europe are already using the CFA program. And if they're not using the CFA program, I, I would query what they are actually indeed using that's so much better than, than what CFA has put out there. And I would go back to the annual where Region 9 wanted to be a region and they said, we don't want to be special, we simply want to be a region like everyone else. Um, and, and I don't see that there will be a problem in Region 8 either. Um, we're just talking about the existing software for the entry clerking program at this point on this motion, as far as I can tell, or am I wrong, Kathy? No, you are correct, uh, Melanie. Um, I, I think what George may have been referring to and I am okay with is the potential language changes that need to be made to the online entry clerking uh, uh the online entry form i'm sorry and um uh, and then the potential language issues that may need to be uh, that will be considered as we move into the process of using ecats to be able to enter cats with um so you know if we just want well, that's not what we're voting on now. one through seven that's fine miss delabar Just in response to uh, Melanie, uh, and uh, please, Rich, please call me Pam. Um, okay, Pam. When um, uh, I queried my, my uh, clubs, yes, everybody is using, or let me put it this way, I got no responses back stating we don't use uh, the CFA entry program. But what I did get back <clears throat> saying this is what we're having problems with the CFA entry program with. And <coughs> part of it is that as I put on to the board list, you know, the different uh, 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 characters that, that we find in the, uh, especially in the Nordic and Germanic languages uh, is causing some difficulties. And the other thing is, is that, um, um, we still must be able to use the the paper uh, entry form uh, in in other cases. Plus, when we're trying to bring in people 
we the show FIFA show this past weekend or the weekend before 600 entries and that was Finland. I want some of those people to come over if they're if they're able to to <clears throat> uh, be a part of CFA. I want to invite them to also include our shows. So. I'm trying to get it as easy as possible for them. Our entry clerks are trying to get things as easy as possible for new exhibitors. But sometimes when we have problems, uh, it's, it's with the system and not particularly the individual. And also, especially when somebody's trying to order or be part of uh, TRNs. So this is why, uh, you know, Kathy and I earlier had emailed and uh, that's why she said, yes, we need to address some of these things before we go on, you know, and I'm going to provide some people for her to, uh, some, uh, some of our smart people to be able to, to answer or maybe even more uh, better explain uh, and more in depth of what uh, the problems that they're having. And of course, the other thing is the CFA isn't open 24 hours a day. <clears throat> we have problems. Um, we have nobody to get in touch with, except another European entry clerk. Thank you, Pam. James? Yeah, I just want to clarify with Pam on, on something here for the entry clerk program and the online entry forms. It sounds like the biggest issue is being able to use what I call special characters. Is that what I'm understanding? And not so much translation issues. It's both, uh, but to the special characters is the thing that we notice first. Okay, the special characters issue, that could probably be resolved much quicker than transla translations. Um, that, that is something easily looked into, and uh, I, you know, hopefully not putting my foot in my mouth, but it should be, should be easy to implement. Thank you, James. So, Kathy, I'm a little bit confused. My understanding is we just have a handful of clubs um, in the states using a non the non CFA entry clerk program. Maybe one club in Japan. I believe all clubs in Europe are using the current CFA entry clerking program. Why are we limiting this to regions one through seven? It sounds like the issues that are being brought up by Pam are separate from the entry clerk program, and we need to address the entry form in some of the other documents, but not necessarily the entry clerk program requirement that all clerk, all uh, entry clerks use that program. But Rich, that's true. Um, but I think what we're going to find as we go through this process and and Pam has already said she doesn't entry clerk so she might not have a an additional comment but my understanding is part of the issues that the entry clerks are uh, encountering is because they cannot use these special characters uh, within the entry clerk program and or the online uh, entry form it's making it difficult for exhibitors to have correct information either in the names of their cats or and or their own personal information. So for um, while they have been negotiating it thus far, uh, it only behooves us, I believe, to uh, try to help them solve the problem so that things make sense going forward and as we uh, become more technologically advanced, uh, you know, it, it would help us uh, at an international level, not only with Europe, but the ID, the ID divisions as well. So um, I am perfectly comfortable starting with regions one through seven and then coming back and adding uh, the other areas as we solve the problems that need to be solved for them. Um, I, I think you'll see in the show rules when when Mary's report comes up that um, we have taken the first step in that. Okay. Uh, Thank you for explaining that. Sure. Um, is there any other discussions or questions on uh, Kathy's motion? Are there?
Are there any objections to Kathy's motion? Seeing no objections, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Kathy. Yep. Do you have anything else? No, not at this time. Okay. And Reads and Standards was moved to February. Thank you very much, Annette. Uh, next is Shell Rules. Uh, I see Mary Kay is with us. Uh, yeah, give me a give me a second. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm gonna try and get through these as as briefly as possible. We're gonna probably withdraw some towards the end and or postpone those until the next meeting. The first two items, we have two items dealing with reimbursements to clubs and as they have an impact on the budget, they need to be handled tonight. These were both passed at the annual by a large margin and were tabled in October to work out a little bit more detail. First is what I call the seldom seen judges pilot program. Up to two clubs from each region and the ID can, except for region nine, can apply for $500 to hire one judge that is seldom seen in the region. The reason why we're not including Europe is Europe already gets money for, for this. Uh, the program has a cap of $10,000 for the 2023-2024 season. Originally, this was supposed to be to hire clubs from overseas, which is hard to define. So when Kathy Calhoun and I discussed it, we arrived at a different criteria. The money can be used for clubs that hire judges that have not been seen at any show in that region or the ID for the past three seasons. For some areas that is effectively gonna be hiring a judge from other countries. Um, this is a pilot program. So if there's, uh, you know, if, we, if clubs use it, we can extend it. If they don't use it, we can give it up. Okay, thank you, Mary Carol Krasnowski. Um, Yes, I simply wanted to, in the essence of uh, saving time, I wanted to make a standing motion to accept all the, the show rule changes as presented, reserving you, the right to vote no. Okay, thank you, Carol. Mike Shelton. Well, first, I will second Carol's motion, also reserving the right to vote no. Um, the only thing I like the idea of doing this as seldom seen judges. Uh, the only thing I would want to do is add a caveat on here that for the purposes of this rule only, Hawaii be considered its own region. I don't want clubs in Hawaii want to do this and not be able to get just the judges they want because those judges have judged in California, which is also region five. Uh, that's the only thing I would ask for. Okay, Mike, before I call on uh, Pam, are you seconding standing motion for all show rules with the right to vote no? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Pam Delabar. Uh, what I was going to uh, please re reiterate is that Region 9 has the special program because of lack of judges, not because we don't have judges that aren't seen. And this, uh, I'm sorry, guys, I don't like seldom seen judges. Um, I wish we had another name for it, but um, I'm not going to... Uh, stand in the way of anybody else being able to to uh, uh, bring judges into their their area but ours is for a different uh, area not uh, uh, excuse me our the reason we have the program is for an entirely different reason and not just one to make sure that that judges that don't seem to have the assignments in certain areas uh, have a chance now to be invited and that that uh, particular expense is paid <laughs> by CFA, or at least $500 of it is. Pam, thank you for clarifying that. Mary? Okay, so I wanna get back to what Mike said. So if you add up that we have eight regions covered in this and the ID that's $9,000, and Kathy said that we could cap this at 10, so there's another $1,000 in play that Kathy and Rich could approve for Hawaii. So if you want to amend this motion, we can. Um, I don't know how to do that, but, um, or, or you can just trust that Kathy and Rich will include Hawaii separately from California. Thank you, Mary. Kathy Calhoun. Uh, yeah, back to Mike's suggestion. I'm a bit confused. 
So this is not preventing Hawaii from hiring judges from that they locally, you know, that economic for them. This is just they won't be supplemented for doing so. So I'm 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 confused. Maybe if you could just restate what your objection is. Mike. My objection was to me that the way I'm interpreting this, the way it's worded, they can receive this supplement if they hire a judge that has not been seen in the region in the last three years. So Correct. if, for example, Kathy, you just judged the show out here. If they wanted to bring you over, <coughs> they would be restricted from doing that, even though you may not have been to Hawaii in the last however long, but you've been to California. That's or, the Hawaii exhibitors and the California exhibitors don't go to the same shows. There is no overlap. They can't come here with their cats. We can't go there with our cats. So they would be restricted from judging other judges only because those judges have judged in California or not from hiring those judges, from getting the supplement for those judges. And I just don't want to put that additional restriction on them if they want to hire somebody who had previously judged two years ago in Arizona. Okay, thank you for the clarification. So, um, Mike, do you want to include an uh, addendum to this motion or make recommendation? And then uh, Carol can uh, uh, make the motion. Uh, it would be something along the lines of for the purposes of this program only, Hawaii will be considered an independent region. Pam Dalibar. Sorry, it's taking me a minute to unmute. Um, who is going to be uh, tracking this program? Carol? Uh, yes, I would. I am willing to amend my motion to um, incorporate the phrase Hawaii is considered an independent region for the purpose of this motion. Thank you, Carol. Mike, I assume you will second it because you will have yes. a standing second and you made it. All right, Mary. Uh, I wanted to answer Pam's question, who will be tracking it? It says right in the motion, Kathy Calhoun and Rich Maston will oversee the application. And Kathy Calhoun already agreed to it. And sorry, Rich, we stuck you in there too. So um, that's right in the motion. So for clarification purposes, who Kathy Calhoun and Rich Maston is, who actually oversees the uh, show sponsorships, including Region 9 incentive program, is the show sponsorship committee, which is under the finance committee. And Kathy is on that um, committee as well. So just for clarification purposes, uh, that's who's going to track it. Rachel? Thank you. Uh, I want to first uh, clarify. It, to me, it's obvious that this is uh, optional. Clubs don't have to hire a seldom seen judge. That's, is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay. And second, um, you know, generally uh, I like to support what the delegates have um, uh, presented to the board for ratification. To me, this is different from what the delegates um, proposed. And uh, for that reason, I am not going to support it. Penny Curley. Um, I, I understand where um, Rachel's coming from. Uh, we had a similar uh, program uh, within the Southern region because of our success in raising funds during the COVID year. And anytime that uh, I'm gonna support anything that helps our clubs. So I, I will be supporting uh, this uh, effort. Thank you, Kenny. Mary. I just wanted to answer what Rachel said had, and I was the one that proposed this to the delegates at the annual, had we passed what the delegates wanted, as Rich pointed out in October, it would have been several hundred thousand dollars. So Kathy and I agreed that uh, Kathy said that there was a little bit of money we could use and we could try this out. And so I thought that this was, this was a good compromise. Thank you for clarifying that, Mary. Carol. Yes. I I think this addresses the spirit of the resolution that the delegates passed. And, you know, I, I'd like to comment that sometimes 
airfare is more expensive from California to the East Coast than from Europe to the East Coast. So I, I have no problem with supporting this as written. Okay. Mary, are you done? With this one, yes. Okay. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll lower my hand. Thank you. I'm going to call for the vote. If you're in favor, raise your hand. Please keep your hand up until I ask you to lower your hand. George Eigenhauser, Kenny Curley, Carol Krasnowski, Mike Shelton, Russell Webb, John Kalilla, Pam Mosier, Melanie Morgan, Yokiko Hayata, Kathy Dunham, Pam Delabar, Kathy Calhoun, Sharon Roy, Mark Hannon, Paula Noble, Annette Wilson. Please lower your hand. If you are opposed, raise your hand. Just screwed here. Rachel Anger, lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. Seeing no abstention, Rachel, please announce the vote. That's 16 yes votes, <coughs> one no vote, zero abstentions. Motion passes, thank you. Mary, continue. Next is another one from the annual, um, strange as it may seem, and it's gonna come as a surprise to some of you, I'm sure, there are in fact some shows that do not offer a discount for miscellaneous provision for AOB entries. So the delegates um, supported the proposal that would allow clubs to receive up to $20 back from CFA if they offered the discounts. Now in October, uh, you wanted a little bit more detail so there's a little bit more detail in this proposal. And I went, I got comments from Aline and central office already tracks these entries and can inform the club when a rebate is available. We also put a cap of $2,500 for the whole season. Last season, there were 115 of these entries. So that would be well within this cap. Thank you, Mary. Uh, standing motion by Carol Krasnowski, standing second by Mike Shelton. Are there any questions for Mary? Are there any objections? Seeing no objections, this motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mary, congratulations, continue. Okay, so the next three are from Kathy Dunham for, the, um, for various items. And the reason it's important to consider these tonight, even though they're not affected till May is if you don't like them and you have comments and you want me to fix them, then I can bring them back in February. So the first one establishes a common closing time for region one through seven, excluding Hawaii. This is something the clubs passed several years ago by over 50%. And I remember because I'm the one that passed it and the entry clerk supported it, but the board declined to implement it. So this time it's limited to just regions one through seven and not Hawaii. Okay, thank you. Pam Dolabar. Even though Region 9 is not included in this, uh, I am voting against this because this is putting just another hindrance on our clubs to be able to try to fill their shows. Uh, if they want to go a day beyond um, the entry closing time that's central for everyone, um, then that has to come to the executive committee of the board. And then how many of those are you guys going to get week after week after week? I do not see where this is going to help clubs. Um, and what all it may do is add some type of placating to um, those who, who feel that it is the end all to solve our problems on um, point manipulation. Thank you, Pam. Any further comments? Mary, you had your hand up and took it down. I took it down, don't worry. Thank you. Seeing no further hands up, I'm going to call for the vote. If you're in favor, raise your hand. Mark Hannon, Pam Mosier, Carol Krasnowski, Kathy Dunham, Paula Noble, Mike Shelton, Rachel Anger, Kathy Calhoun, Annette Wilson, Russell Webb, lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. George Eigenhauser, 
Hauser, Sharon Roy, Melanie Morgan, Pam Delabar, John Clilla, Kenny Curley. Lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. Yokika Hayata, lower your hand. Rachel, please announce the vote. We have 10 yes votes, six no votes, one abstention. Motion passes. Mary, continue. Okay, so number four, because of the problem with the character sets that we found out about, um, we want to withdraw number four and, uh, and we pre-noticed another resolution that a, a show rule change that applies only to regions one through seven. And that okay. was pre-noticed yesterday. So how do we do this? All right, um, Aline, can you bring up the pre-notice motion it's, that was sent it's yesterday? It's there, it's on the screen. Thank you. So this is the same show rule, only it just applies to regions one through seven and not to, to all the other areas. And it is that all the entries must be received through the CFA online form. Now, will entry clerks still be able to accept paper entries? Actually, yes, they can, as long as the entry clerk puts it through the form prior to the closing time. It'll get time stamped and it will get there. And you may have noticed already, we need to, we need to give thanks to Kathy Dunham and Kathy Durdick. There's already a count on the show schedule of the entries as they come in so that people don't have to wait for the entry clerk to process all the entries in the breed summary. They're already getting a count there. Okay, thank you, Mary. Discussion? Annette? Thank you. Um, do we have some idea on, you know, on an average, how many entries come in through a manual form, either in the mail or as an email attachment? Mary, we can't hear you, but oh, I'm, I'm sorry you shake your head no. I'm sorry, very, very few. I mean, I... I but, but, but is it like one per show or two or three per show? Okay. Is that is that and right, Kathy? Is that your experience? Yes, that's my experience as well, Mary. Okay. Okay. I have a corollary question. Go ahead, okay. Annette. Okay. Um, so do the entry clerks have time to put those in? And, and would they intend to put those in via the online form? Mary? If, they, if you're getting a paper entry form, I'm sure you're going to get it before, right before the closing right. time. Remember, the closing time is now set to midnight Monday night. So they should have all day to put that in because if they receive it by mail, they're going to get it earlier in the day. Um, if they receive it, if somebody hands it to them at a show in the weekend, they have all day Monday to put it in. So yeah, they should have plenty of time okay. to put that in. Okay, so, yeah. so if someone, if someone for example, attaches a PDF of an entry form to an email and sends it to the entry clerk on Saturday, say, and the entry clerk decides they don't have time to put that in, then has the person entered the show or not? No, because they have the entry must be put in through the form. Okay. I, I, I realize that, you know, the sticking point is it's not very many people, but if it's a, a few or it's one or two entries per show. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm just feeling like we're, we're saying, well, you know, we used to take the entries this way, but we don't anymore. I don't have time to do it. Will they be notified their entries not okay. in or? Annette, the problem that you mentioned, it can happen now. Right. I entry, when I entry clerked, I remember somebody handed me entries at a show and they sat in my purse for a month and I forgot completely about them and had to do an addendum. So okay. it, is, it is entirely possible right now today that somebody could email the entry clerk with a PDF of an entry and the entry clerk is under no obligation to accept an entry that way. Uh, you know, the, you're, the, you're supposed to send the entries to the entry clerk in the manner in which the entry clerk wishes to accept them. And the club can say no entries of any other way, but just in case they want to accept those paper entries or the email PDF, the entry clerk would have time to put that in. And if they're if you're afraid of them missing it, well, they can miss it now. No, I understand, but but I don't think this is going to be then an excuse for an addendum, right? As it would no. be. Okay, so you're correct. So 
and I realize it's up to the person entering the show to verify that their entry has been received um, by, by a confirmation, but I, okay. I, I'm, I'm just a little concerned about people who do it a different way. I'm not one of them, but I know well, people who do. Well, we can try it if, and if there's problems with it, we can come back and say, you know, you guys can come back and say, no, we're going to take, we're going to blow this away. Well, I, I don't really want to do that. I'd rather see something on the on the flyer that says we're only taking entries through the online form. I can add a show rule in February that says the flyer must state that right. entries will only be accepted through the online form. Okay, right. I'm done. Kathy Donham. Um, I just want to make a comment. Uh, there are going to be other additional show rules that. Uh, are being worked on for entry clerks and uh, flyers and catalogs and various other things as we go through this process. And I think that's one of the many rules that we can certainly clean up and uh, be able to address uh, Annette's concerns and uh, anyone else's concerns at this point. So uh, we have the ability to be able to work on that. We just didn't have the time to get them all ready for this meeting. Thank you, Kathy. We look forward to seeing what you have for February's meeting then. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Are there any objections to this motion? Okay, I'm gonna call for the, uh, the vote. If you're in favor, raise your hand. Mark Hannon, Carol Krasnowski, Melanie Morgan, Yukika Hayata, Kathy Dunham, Kenny Curley, Mike Shelton, Pam Mosier, Annette Wilson, Russell Webb, Rachel Anger, Paula Noble, George Eigenhauser, John Kalilla, Kathy Calhoun, Sharon Roy. Please lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Pam Delabar. Lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. No abstentions. Rachel, please call the vote. We have 16 yes votes, one no vote, zero abstentions. Motion passes. Mary, continue. Okay, uh, this next motion is to require all entry clerks to use the CFA entry clerk program or pay a fee. And I just wanted to say, if you want to amend it, all we have to do is say for all CFA shows in regions one through seven, but I don't, I can't make the amendment. So um, it's up to you. The fee, the language about the fee, that is a statement that central office wanted. And because I said, why not just not score the show? So Aline can comment on why she wants that fee in there. Aline, do you want to comment? It's, it's just an incentive to use the entry clerk software, which is the uh, way we're going. And the reason for the fee versus not scoring the show is not scoring the show affects the exhibitors. The exhibitors have nothing to do with this. They don't even know what entry clerk software is being used. So I think uh, the onus should be on the club and the entry clerk, not the exhibitors. Okay, um, Kathy Dunham. Uh, yes, I would um, like to amend this motion to just be regions one through, six, uh, through one through seven. Uh, this will be consistent with what was passed in my previous report. Uh, and then as uh, programming changes uh, become effective, we can always add uh, the other areas as necessary. Okay. Um... Carol, do you accept the recommendation from Kathy Dunham? Yes, I do. Mike Shelton, do you accept? Yes. Okay, Pam Mosier. You're on mute, Pam. Yeah, there I go. Um, I'm a little confused. I th how I thought we just passed that they have to use the CFA entry. This is a show rule. Okay, George Eigenhauser. If this is the show rule, just make it a show rule. They have to use the CFA entry clerking program. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see 
why we're giving them permission not to use it if they're willing to pay a $500 fine. Uh, and, and that seems to be what we're doing. What we should just say is thou shalt, and that becomes the rule. Not you ought to follow this rule, but if you don't, no, there's no if you don't. Okay, thank you, George. Kathy Dunham. Yeah, uh, to follow up on George, uh, yes, this is just the show rule uh, putting in place what we voted on earlier. Um, and the $500 fee um, central office asked for as the consequence if it's not followed. So um, that's why that's there, George. Aline? Uh, basically, Kathy said what I was going to say. What's the penalty if a club doesn't do it, if, an entry, if they use any other software? That we say they must. If they don't, what happens? George? Same thing that happens when they violate any CFE rule. There's a protest against them. The board makes a determination as to what we think is the appropriate penalty at the time. It could be more. It could be less. It could be a $500 fine. If somebody's particularly egregious about it, the penalty might be to bar them from producing shows in the future. But the board should be making that determination on a case by case basis. Carol? Uh, yes, I think that most entry clerks now do use the CFA entry clerking program, if I'm correct. Like, I'm not sure of the exact percentage, but I, I really believe that allowing, <clears throat> putting this fee in place is, is just a way to try to bring these people over eventually. And some of them might be a little reluctant in the beginning. But I, I also believe that exhibitors, once they find out how convenient it is to enter their cats through eCats, are going to be putting pressure on entry clerks to switch over to the CFA program. Mark? Huh? No. Yeah, um, we've got a lot of show rules and the Central office is frequently in the position of, well, what's the penalty if they don't do it? You know, here we're presenting the, the, the penalty, and I'd much rather just have the penalty and the show rules than have to go through protest process uh, and take up okay. our time there. I'd rather have the central office just say, well, according to the show rules, you owe us 500 bucks for your failure to follow the show rule. Any other comments? Okay. Um... Carol, can you read the revised motion? You want me to read it? Oh. I, uh, I think it's, well, if Carol's got it, she can. Okay. If she doesn't, Mary, you can. And it's on okay. the screen as well. Okay. I, I'll read it. For all okay. CFA shows in regions one through seven, okay. entry clerks must use the CFA entry clerk program. A fee, as specified in CFA's current price list, is payable by the club to CFA if any other software is used. No further shows will be licensed for the club until this fee is paid. And then okay. the next thing is set the fee for using non-CFA entry clerk software to 500. That's another, that's another motion now. Okay, thank you, Carol. Mary? It, oh, I can, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna call for the uh, vote on this. If you're in favor of this motion, raise your hand. Mark Hannon, Kathy Dunham, Mike Shelton, Kenny Curley, Melanie Morgan, Carol Kuznowski, Russell Webb, Kathy Calhoun, Yokiko Hayata, Paula Noble, John Kalilla, Rachel Anger, Annette Wilson. Please lower your hand. If you are opposed, raise your hand. George Eigenhauser, Pam Mosier, Sharon Roy. Lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. Pam Delabar, lower your hand. Rachel, please announce the vote. Um, I believe Russell Webb uh, voted, but could I uh, get confirmation of his vote? Russell? Four. Four. Thank you. Yes. Who's okay. in favor? Uh, 
That's 13 yes, three no, one abstention. Motion passes. Hey, Mary, continue. So uh, the next motion is to set the fee for not using the CFA software to $500. Okay, thank you, John. I raised my hand by accident, sorry. Okay, any discussion on the fee of $500? Seeing no, no discussion, is there any objections to the $500 fee? Seeing no objection, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, how are we doing on time, Rich? You are at your 30 minutes, Mary. Do you is there anything else that need, can we go on to, can we do number eight or no? Uh, seven. I'm seven sorry, and eight. Seven. Or Seven and eight are kind of the same. Do you want to talk about them tonight or postpone them? All right, let me go to Carol. Carol? Um, it's, I, I guess the question is, time-wise, um, do we want to address this now? Um, if we're going to address it at all, it probably should be now, but I anticipate that it's going to generate quite a bit of discussion, personally. So can I have a motion to uh, move number seven and eight until we finish all other open session items. Any moves? Thank you, Kenny. Second. Have, thank you, Carol. Any objections to moving seven and eight until we finish all the other open session items? Okay, no objections unanimously. We're gonna move seven and eight until the end. Um, Mary, uh, we'll let you back in when... Okay. Uh, uh, we have time, okay? Okie doke. Great job on uh, your time management. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Melanie, judging program. Now you're on mute. Judging program. What about nine and ten for um, Mary? No, we're we've um, we've stopped doing show rules altogether. We will bring back right. seven and eight if we have time at the end of open session. Ah, uh, okay, got it. All right. Um, I know time's limited and we're trying to stay within action items, but I'd like to um, start by offering our condolences to the families of Edna Field and Vicki Abelson who passed away recently. We would also like to acknowledge with regret the resignation of Rod Yorin and wish him the best of luck in his new position as president of FCCV. We also wish Ellen Honey the best as she'll be retiring in May of 2023. Um, Going on, we have a number of items in our report that detail progress, but have no action items. If anyone has any questions, I'm glad to elaborate on anything. Um, just raise your hand. Uh, but barring that, I'll, I'll jump straight into our first action item, if you don't mind. Um, I know that the proposed designated handler program is controversial and many don't support it. I understand that, but I reiterate that we're losing judges and the accompanying expertise that they bring to the table um, is, is a huge loss um, that's coming at us at an alarming rate. Uh, we're working hard to replace them, but that, that process takes time. And even in a perfect world, we're looking at losing an immense treasure trove of knowledge um, short-term. So we've been tasked with coming up with solutions, both long-term and short-term. And solutions come hand in hand with change. And we all know, um, like our cats, we don't like change. Change is difficult to accept. Um, I don't anticipate that this designated handler option would be utilized that often, but giving our judges the option gives us the potential for extending the time that we will have with some of, um, and I believe uh, with some of our, our best uh, treasure troves of knowledge, and I believe that is in overall in the best interest of CFA. Um, I also think that the program gives us another tool for use in training our future judges, which is kind of cool. and. Um, in closing, as I look at this designated um, 
handler program and move on to the action item here, I, I would like to say I really appreciate the work that was put into breaking the program out by some of our committee members. And I hope that you all will at least consider it. Um, my action item is to approve um, the designated handler program effective May 1, 2023 with training and licensing effective immediately. Any questions? I have a second. George will second. Okay, thank you, George. Open for discussion. Mike Shelton. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. Um, under the judge's responsibility, in the first paragraph, it says use of the handler may not exceed six months per incident, but the last one says use of a designated handler will be limited to one year. And that's confusing to me that, the, that we have the two different time frames. And the other question I have is under the handler's responsibility, there is a note that a handler may have entries in the show, but will require an agent. Would the handler's cats be eligible to be shown in the handler's ring? Uh, before I call on anybody else, assuming there's gonna be more questions, Melanie, will you take those first two questions? Uh, yes, um, Mike, thank you. The, um, the What we anticipate is that you might have one incident, um, kind of like with an insurance policy that the deductibles per incident, not per year. Um, so you might have an incident, say, where you hurt your knee, um, and that would be, you'd get six months on that. But while you were rehabbing on the knee, you fell and hurt your shoulder. That's a different <coughs> thing. That'd be another six months not to exceed a year. Um, and yes, right now we would anticipate that the um, handler's cats could be shown in that ring. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Russell? Uh, I just, we have the show rule you know, three with the event of the judges incapacitated prior to his uh, judging assignment. So with this, the judge can walk in before the show begins and say they need a handler. I think it short changes the cats and the exhibitors. If I'm going to go to a show where I've won the judge to judge my cat. I don't need a handler taking the cat from the cage to the table and a judge standing there. Most of us, when we judge, by the time we, we put our hands in the cage, take the cat out and put it by the table, we, we feel the weight, the muscle tone, the coat. I I, I, I can't, I won't vote. <clears throat> I will do a yes on this. Thank you, Russell. Kenny? Yeah, uh, the last time um, when, when we initially spoke about this, you had indicated that the rest of the committee uh, were against this. Uh, have they since come around or are they now for it or, or are they still against it as a the rest of your committee? I was just wondering. Melanie? Um, I, the entire committee was not against it. We were split. Um, and I think we probably still remain split. Thank you. Pam Delabar. Um, where I was was uh, comparing this to to the steward program that <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, the steward program that we we often see in the other uh, organizations over here. Um, I was surprised to find the high level of people that view the handling program that we're going to be doing this weekend uh, with favor, but they feel that if a judge is injured, um, it prevents not only liability for, for the judge, the handler, uh, they're worried about the clubs, and most of all, they're worried about the cats. So, um, I am have to going to not support this. Thank you, Pam. Carol? Uh, yes, a lot of what I wanted to say was already um, said, but I do want to comment that I believe this is something that the delegates should vote on. This is a major change in, in the judging procedure in our rings. And we have a show rule in place for when a judge is incapacitated. And I think that we would require additional show rules to cover this situation. I also have a question about the handler. Um, in there, there was a, um, 
note saying that the judge would pay the handler and provide their lunch. But what about travel expenses, hotel, things like that? That's not addressed. Uh, would that be the club's responsibility or the handler's responsibility or the judge's responsibility? I don't think I can support this. Melanie, you want to address Carol's question? Much like uh, in a clerking situation, since the handler's cats would still be um, eligible to show at the show, it would be the handler's responsibility to uh, pay for their own expenses to and from the show, uh, et cetera. Uh, but during the day where they are not actively getting to participate while their animals might be able to, um, that's where they would be, what they would be compensated for. So no, they would not, um, no one would be responsible for their travel expenses other than them. Um, and and um, it's a, a good point, Carol, about the delegates. Okay, any further discussion? Melanie, any last comment before I call for the vote? Nope. Okay, if you're in favor of this motion, please raise your hand. Melanie Morgan, please lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Mark Cannon, Pam Mosier, Carol Krasnowski, Russell Webb, Pam Delabar. George Eigenhauser, Kenny Curley, Mike Shelton, John Quilla, Kathy Dunham, Paula Noble, Yokika Hayata, Kathy Calhoun. Please lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. Rachel Anger, Annette Wilson, Sharon Roy. Please lower your hand. Rachel, please call the vote. Thank you, that's 13 yes, sorry, one yes, <clears throat> 13 no, three abstentions. Motion fails. Melanie, do you have anything else you wanna review? Yep, moving on. Um, in October, <coughs> the board approved changes to the judging program rules and we think, Kathy, you have something? Kathy Calhoun? You're muted. Sorry, I just had a question whether you, plan to present this to the delegation because I, I think I agree with Carol that that is really it's very important to get the delegation to weigh in on this and I wondered if that was something that you would consider moving forward with well certainly considered I think it's a great idea um but but not if the board is 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 vehemently opposed to it which it seems that they are so um, there's really no point in getting it past the delegation if, if the board is opposed, so. Okay, thank you. But I thought it was a good idea. Melanie, continue. All right. Um, as I was saying, the board approved changes to the judging program rules, um, and we thank them for that. The, and those changes allowed us to give potential candidates more options. Um, and once we started implementing those changes, we realized that we needed to make some modifications to the way that they were written in order to maintain the intent of what we'd actually proposed and thought we approved. Uh, so the changes to 2.10 are clarifying the areas where our applications administrator and our recruitment director um, identified problems and confusion and are consistent with, with our trying to offer menu choices um, rather than forcing people to take the same path as they move towards uh, the goal of applying to the judging program. Um, and then the change to 8.2 clarifies um, that we're including judges from regions one through seven and nine um, in our training, et cetera. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that all the changes to the judging program rules be approved as written and incorporated into the existing changes as approved at our October meeting. Okay, may I have a second? Russell, second. Thank you, Russell. Discussion, George? Yeah, I think I spotted a typo. Okay. Un under 8.2F, where it yeah. says the two sessions must be completed in regions one through nine or nine. I think you meant one through seven or nine. Yes. Oh. Trainees in Japan must complete a minimum of two sessions working with judges from one through seven or nine is what I have here. We may. Maybe you guys don't have the. It, it, says, it says one through nine or nine on, on the screen. 
second oh, our second second got it i see it uh-huh okay so the motion would be admitted to change that typo to one through seven or nine okay and russell do you are you in agreement yes thank you george thank you. george thank you pam dolivar comment I have to make is about trainees from Region 9. And um, if they're long hair, they can do their entire uh, training within Region 9, a large area. If they're short hair, it has two sessions must be completed in the United States. Though I think that we're seeing a bigger variety of short hairs uh, coming up now. Um, in uh, many of our areas. I mean, where else can somebody be confronted with 15 Abyssinian grand champions um, and other uh, breeds that are not readily available within the, the US. But one of the things that does concern me is the fact that, that we allow uh, the trainees from the international division uh, to have training a, a week apart. So they get to have it one week and then stay over five days and then have another training. That's not given to those from Europe. And it's still just as much expense for them as it is for a trainee from the ID. Melanie? Uh, well, none of that portion of that is coming up in this particular um, motion. That said, Pam has some good points. Um, First of all, uh, uh, in that I'm not sure that it's it's still pertinent that we should require that they have to be trained in the U.S., um, especially if U.S. judges are, are training them over there. Um, and that's certainly something that we might want to take a look at. In terms of uh, allowing consecutive weekends, we have allowed that for European judges, and we certainly would consider that um, if it's necessary. Pam Delabar, do you have any additional comments? Just, just additional. Uh, how about we make this part of our discussion uh, this coming weekend? Okay, that sounds good. Okay, at okay. least we, I can have a scotch while we're doing it. <laughs> okay, any and chocolate for me. <laughs> and chocolate for, for Melanie and bread. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Any objections to this motion? Seeing no objections, this motion passes unanimously. Okay, Melanie. That's it for me for now. All right, thank you. Uh, Kathy Calhoun, Treasurer's Report. Kathy Calhoun, Treasurer's Report. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, I trust that everyone has read the report. And um, so I will just cover a few points. Uh, we know that registration is our number one income uh, stream. And we're down 5.24% or 91, almost 92% of budget. You can continue, Ali. Um, the annual meeting. Well, we have um, very close to the final numbers on the annual. The annual meeting cost us $72,435. Um, the budget was Kathy, you go. You went on mute again. Uh, it doesn't show I'm on mute. You're, can you hear I me? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we we knew that going in that it, there would be an expense, and um, that was budgeted at thirty nine thousand dollars, but uh, we came in over that. And keep in mind that um, 
the annual meeting financials do not include the cost of the board meeting. So the board meeting in of itself in and of itself was forty five thousand dollars. So if we continue to yeah right there the the bottom line, one of the things that we've been doing well at is our net operating income, which was the third line down. We've been managing um, our expenses in in keeping with our income. So our net operating income is a positive $16,432. Uh, but when you drop down to the bottom line, uh, we are behind our budget and uh, there's $106,000 loss. There are a couple of other things and keep in mind that this report is through the end of October. There are a couple of, of uh, things that we have and I've categorized them as headwinds. Uh, we know that the uh, pet expo had its challenges and it's the rough numbers are we would be at a uh, loss of, of $5,000 or cost, however you wanna frame that. We also know that COVID continues to be a challenge in China and uh, we've had a number of shows that have, have uh, been postponed. Um, this is impacting dramatically our registration out of China. And, and quite frankly, um, registration is down for most of the globe. So we have a couple of opportunities. Uh, one of the opportunities and I, would be to have the February 2023 board meeting via Zoom. This would will, will result in a savings or a cost avoidance, it was a better way of putting it, of $35,000 to $45,000. Um, a couple of other notes. I know that there is the positive um, element of having in-person meetings being the, the ability to collaborate offline and those sorts of things. And I know that we've we've had some thoughts and comments made that you know when we have Zoom meetings we make bad decisions and actually what really occurs is and what Rich is trying to prevent uh, by keeping us on time on time and on task and on schedule tonight is that when we have the meetings that we have on the Tuesday evenings and they go extremely late that's when we we kind of get weary and and decisions are maybe are not as well thought through. But the Zoom meetings um, and our regular meetings being like February, uh, October, and at one point even the June meeting, those we we those meetings go very very well. So there's there's some, some benefit there. Um, the second um, consideration would be next in next year's budget. That would be to uh, to uh, uh, conduct the October 2023 meeting in person but in conjunction with the international show. This uh, in and of itself would save money in that there'll be a number of board members, no doubt that will be participating in the international show in one way or another, either judging or supporting. So we would avoid a duplication of travel expenses. So my motion tonight is to conduct the February, 2023 CFA board meeting virtually via Zoom, via the Zoom platform and make the decision regarding the October 2023 board meeting in June of 2023. May I have a second, please? Annette Wilson. You're on mute. Are you making a second? No, I was, I had a question. That's a, okay. May I'll I have second, a second it. I Thank can you, second Annette. it. Yeah. Okay, proceed with your question. Okay, so I, I have a question about this thing about in October. What what weekend is the international show? So the, the, the second full second weekend in October. So the board yeah. meeting is the first weekend. Right. So where the savings would come in, if say for instance, um, I'm coming in, I'll use myself as an example for the board meeting, flying to Ohio coming back to Chicago, and then I'm supporting the 
international as treasurer, I would fly back to Ohio and come back to Chicago. This could be avoided instead of having two back and forth travel uh, itineraries, there would be one. Now this won't impact everyone on the board by well, no means, but I'm, it I'm, would impact them. If, are you talking about a meeting the same weekend as the international show? So the week, the yes, well, not the same weekend. It would be following Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, oh, Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so I yeah. thought you were gonna like, it would be it would be cost effective to put all the board members up for an entire week and not let them go home. No, no, yes. no, no. Kathy and Annette, okay. may I interject, please? <laughs> we, I would, um, and I know it's a little confusing when we um, uh, when we have listed there the opportunity of doing an in-person board meeting in conjunction with the international show. But I'd like to stick with the motion that's on the floor, which is specific to the February board meeting being done via Zoom. If we want to discuss the opportunity for October after, we can do that. I don't want the rest of the board getting confused on what the motion on the floor is. Um, so do we have the motion on the floor? Uh, Kathy, go ahead and repeat it. Conduct the February 2023 CFA board meeting virtually via the Zoom platform and make the decision regarding the October 2023 board meeting in June of 2023. Okay, thank you. And Annette, you did make the second on that. Pam Delabar? You're on mute, Pam. Sorry about that. Um, I think you all know my, my feelings about having the in-person board meetings. I feel that it's vital. I believe it is a cost of, <clears throat> excuse me, a cost of doing business of this organization. And the more effective we are, the more dynamic we are in our leadership of this organization, I think we're going to see that uh, help pump up the organization as a whole and possibly put some spirit back into it to where people are wanting to register cats and participate in shows. Um, the, the difference when we saw, when we were together in June was ever so different than our uh, Zoom meeting in October and even uh, subsequent uh, Zoom meetings, um, we don't get those intangibles through Zoom. And um, I will participate in any board meeting that we have, but let me tell you guys at 4.25 in the morning, it's, it gets a little strained for those of us <clears throat> living outside the confines of the uh, continental U United States. Thank you, Pam. Any further discussion? Kathy, you want a final comment on this? Um, yeah, while I do appreciate Pam's um, input and I don't, I don't, doubt that there is a plus in being in person. I get that. But we have to be realistically realistic about our managing costs. Um, there are two points of view on this sort of thing. There are many organizations where people are via Zoom, they're 100% at home, those sorts of things. There are other organizations or other, other um, thoughts that it does not replace the the interaction of being together as one. I get that. I get that. But in my role, I feel it's very important that we manage costs so we keep that net operating income piece above the red line. It's very important. We have headwinds. We have to be prepared for them. So um, I think that this is one way in our grasp where we can avoid the other consequences of having a meeting in February being weather conditions, which I didn't mention before. Um, and I think that we can still be 
effective. And in fact, I know that we can. Okay, thank you, Kathy. I'm gonna call for the vote. If you're in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Kathy Calhoun, Pam Mosier, Yukika Hayata, Kathy Dunham, Sharon Roy, Rachel Anger, Paula Noble, Carol Kuznowski. Please lower your hand. If you are opposed, raise your hand. Melanie Morgan, Mark Hannon, Annette Wilson, Pam Delabar, Russell Webb, Kenny Curley, Mike Shelton, John Clilla, George Eigenhauser. Please lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. No abstentions. Rachel, please call the vote. We have eight yes votes, nine no votes, zero abstentions. Motion fails. Kathy, do yes. you have anything further at this time? Not from the, on the treasurer's report. Okay, Kenny. Yeah, I, I had a, a question about the treasurer's report, not the, the motion that we voted upon. Uh, the five thousand dollar cost uh, for the pet expo. Um, what was that for? Well, what it we, it it, it budgets just it budgets. We we the only thing that we did not pay for was the the hall itself. So we paid for the judges coming in. We paid for the setup. We paid uh, you know normal like expenses with the judges, hotel, travel, judges fees, setup. Um, we had the central office. We had some members from the central office there, and we didn't get entries. Okay, we didn't get the entries that. Right, so I, it, I it's was but it was but the just, money went. But thank you, Kathy. Yeah, just like any other show, except we didn't have to pay for the facility. But on the flip side of that, we didn't. We also didn't benefit from the gate because that goes to that went to the pet fair. All right, thank you, Kathy. Okay. Kathy, once once you have the final report, we'll distribute that to the board. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Anything further, Kathy? No. Okay. Unless there are other questions. Kenny, Kenny do you have any further ended. questions? Okay. Let's okay, go uh, on. No, Rick, I just sorry. Go ahead, Eileen. I just want to clarify. So the February board meeting is going to be in person. Is that correct? Uh, the, the board voted to not okay. support a yes. Zoom okay. uh, meeting sure. for February. That is correct. Um, just to let you know, I'll be looking at the Crown Plaza in Cleveland for the location. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kathy, let's do the audit report. Okay. Um, again, I trust that you read the report. The uh, action item, if you scroll down, we don't have any action items on this, but I just wanted to note that um, the um, budget, the, uh, sorry, not the budgeted, but the audited financials will be sent to the club secretaries as dictated by the bylaws. Okay, thank you. And the entire audit will be in File Vista for your reading pleasure. Uh, Aline, you, you have your hand up. Oh, sorry. I just didn't take it down. Pam Delavar. Uh, when will these reports be sent out to the clubs? Aline can answer that. Uh, we should be able to get those out within the next couple of weeks. I first want to confer with Kathy to confirm exactly what we'll be sending out. And then we'll it'll be sent via email. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Kathy, continue. Okay. We'll go on to the budget committee report. All right. Yep. Um, so uh, again, I'm sure you've read the report. It doesn't change much. Uh, there's dates that uh, the uh, the timeline for the budget. So I'd like to scroll to the action items. As mentioned before, um, uh, the VCC 
chaired by Kathy Dunham, is planning to produce two virtual shows in uh, the latter half of this fiscal year. This was not included in the budget. So in order to do so, uh, there will be expense of the of the subscription for the software, which will, if we extend it now, it will expire in December of 2023. So we will get uh, a benefit from that next year as well. And there's also a 10% discount to do so. There's also a software upgrade that is necessary and it is also going to be discounted. So here's their budget. And the motion is to approve the VCC budget as outlined below. George will second. Thank you, George. Discussion? Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Kathy, I wanna thank uh, Kathy Dunham and Nancy Kerr for uh, reestablishing the VCC uh, committee to move forward uh, with the program. Continue, Kathy. Okay, so the second uh, motion is around corporate sponsorship. So um, we want to, we need to develop partnerships with, with those that may be in a position to provide sponsorships for our activities, our shows, um, and invest in CFA. Uh, one of the uh, platforms where that could be done is attending trade shows. But we don't have a lot of experience in that, and we need to get a better understanding of you know what will that bring to the table and what do we need to bring to the table to uh, garner those partnerships so this there is a trade show it's called the global pet expo in orlando march 22nd through the 24th of 2023 the motion is to approve a budget of 3500 dollars to attend the global pet expo we have a second please any seconds thank you kenny any discussion? Any objections? Seeing no objections, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Kathy, continue. Nothing further in the um, budget committee? No. Okay, we're gonna go on to international division. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why this uh, spreadsheet that John Kalila provided has no numbers in it. I The uh, file on file Vista is populated, so I'm not sure what occurred here. But basically, the um, spreadsheet outlined that there had only been seven rings, uh, long hair with the specialty judges, seven long hair, seven short hair rings, and it listed the shows that had been scheduled and postponed. I'd be happy to send that to anyone or it is on, in file Vista in its entirety. So I'm not really sure what happened. Does anybody have any questions for Kathy on the internet, International Division Report? John? I just have additional comment about the uh activity in China. We actually have another show last weekend. So we uh, basically approved eight shows, three shows were successful and five shows was postponed. And then for the first time, we actually have a, a show that being applied in the Northern Territory. So we will hopefully we'll have shows in all three territory next year. Okay, thank you, John. Kathy, do you have any further comments? No, I trust that everyone has read the report. I don't see any hands, Kathy. Thank you for your report. We're gonna move on to experimental format. Sharon. Mute here. Yes, we have actually have two um, action items. The first one, was submitted by Lucky Tom Cat and Tiger's Lair Cat Club. They'd like to hold two OCP um, rings at their show the end of the year. Um, this will be very similar to what was held at the Florida shows where they are going to have two separate judgings. 
And Kathy Dunham, do you have anything else to say about it? Uh, no, uh, we are just hoping to provide an opportunity for the exhibitors uh, to grand those cats as they move into the new season. And we hope that you will support that endeavor. Okay, Sharon, did you state your motion? Um, I make a motion to grant an exception to show rule 406 to allow Lucky Tomcat Club and Tiger's Lair to include two OCP rings at their April 29th and 30th, 2023 show. Carol May said. Have, who did? Carol. Thank you, Carol. Any discussion? Kenny? I think the club really liked this. Uh, after we turned down uh, a, a, a club at the previous board meeting, I got a lot of feedback that said that they were disappointed. Um, you know, we've established the minimums. I'm gonna be doing an OCP ring this weekend. Uh, we did not hit the numbers in premiership, but we did hit the numbers in championship. Just to have this available, it just creates another level of excitement for our exhibitors. And I think that's what we want. Thank you, Kenny. Mark? Yeah, the one we turned down at the last meeting was uh, because it had already been pre-scheduled in that area. And I'm pleased to see we're going into a new area with this and potentially different exhibitors with feedback on it. And I'm pleased to see they're bringing in two additional judges for it, which was uh, the original proposal. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions or comments? Any objections to this motion? Seeing no objection, this motion passes unanimously. Okay, Sharon. Okay, the second one is a little different. Um, the GEMS Egyptian Mao Club has for several years done a breed summit. And last year they did, uh, well, it was all on one day, but they did the Egyptian mouse first. What they're looking for is an exception to try to help, I guess, speed the show, but be able to have the mouse have more exposure and to do three of those Egyptian mouse summit rings on Friday night. And I, I'm going to turn this over to Melanie to see if she has some other um, things to say on it. Melanie? Oh, yeah, I'm happy. To answer any questions, um, the concept uh, is really designed, as, as Sharon said, to try to expedite things. Uh, we would still be starting the show late for all exhibitors other than Egyptian Mao people. But what we found was last time when we had three rings early, early in the morning and then three more rings right after that, that the process took longer than um, we had anticipated. Um, with the bay judging for the mouths in the morning. And so that subsequently meant that we bumped start back for the show. Um, and since most of our Mao exhibitors are in on Friday night and we will have set up the show hall, um, we thought, well, wait a minute, we could do three of the rings on Saturday, uh, Friday night and then start with the first round um, early in the morning, uh, Saturday morning, and then be able to start the show um, later for the other exhibitors, but on time, um, which would just take a lot of time pressure off of everything. Okay, uh, Sharon, we have your motion here. I don't okay, the motion is to allow the um, Egyptian Mao Summit um, to have a Friday night, uh, can we bring it down? Grant an exception to the show rules to allow the Egyptian Mao Summit to have three summit rings conducted on Friday night. And I've just shortened that a little bit. You can read the full motion there. There are no, just so everybody knows that unlike the OCP rings, there are no points awarded in this um, summit format. Okay, may Carol I have a second? second? Carol seconds. Thank you, Carol. Okay, any further discussion, questions? Any objections? Seeing no objection, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Sharon, thank you. Anything further? No, nothing further for this meeting. Okay, great. Um, let's see, we are moving on to IT. James? Thanks, Rich. I don't have anything additional to add to the report I submitted. Uh, 
happy to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions for James? Melanie? Yeah, um, I don't mean to put your feet to the fire, but it seems like for as long as I've been uh, attending board meetings and then subsequently been on the board that we've been working on the genetics project. And it seems that we keep making progress, but um, I don't see an absolute timeline here and it just keeps rolling down the road. So I'm kind of asking for some specifics on that because I think it's really important. Um, I'm, I'm strongly in favor of it. I think you guys are doing great work there, but at some point I, I'd like to see it deliver. Oh, certainly. Yeah, we're, we, we really like to put this one away as soon as possible. Um, the reason the timeline just kind of keeps rolling down the road is it's um, you know a massively difficult project um, a lot of stuff was not understood until, you know, we got into the meat and potatoes of it. Um, so it's, you know, it's a lot of learning on all of our parts. Um, and we're trying to make, you know, what, what has been invested in, um, you know, we're certainly not in a position to scrap it, um, but we need to understand what logic needs to be added and tweaked to get this to work the way we expected it to. Um, you know, I really can't put a firm date on it because, you know, we just, there's too many unknowns still. Okay, Mark? I assume that the longer this goes on, the more expensive it becomes, right? James? It is, but minimal. The the changes, the most of the time that we've spent has been on our end, uh, the, you know, the testing, working with Paul and Steve Merritt. Um, you know, cleaning up the data. Yes, we're we're having some expense to update data and have uh, Sonnet do some additional programming. But so far, it's been pretty minimal. But we're also paying Steve, right? Well, not, no. Ali, Ali. Uh, Steve has not submitted any additional invoices. I think at this point, he's he's just helping us out. Um, one thing I'd like to touch on that James mentioned is learning a curve and learning genetics. We've all had to learn genetics, including our programmers, you know, and it's something that they've never encountered before. So that learning curve was very large. And frankly, it's something we hadn't expected or anticipated. We probably should have, but we just, we didn't. Um, so that's part of what's taken so long, just the whole understanding of genetics, um, which I think everybody agrees is not the easiest thing to understand. Okay, Rachel? We may not be paying Steve, but we're certainly paying Paul. No, we're not paying Paul. No, we're not. I stand corrected. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions or comments? James, maybe you could provide to the board a little bit more of a timeline estimate uh, for the February board meeting. I think we will. Yes, we the, the the latest. I hate to call it a breakthrough, but it was kind of a breakthrough because we we saw a massive change in our results uh, with this latest update. Um, has really, I think, put us on a little bit clearer path. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we're now going into unfinished business. Is there anything from any other committees? Okay. Um, wait, I, oh. How about new business? Pam? This is bringing up the uh, motion on 44 Gotti that was online that was never um, completed. I don't think with the voting there there was it just didn't didn't get done. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Still waiting for one vote to come in. Well, it uh, for online it had two no votes, so we would have to bring it back to the board now because our online motions have to be unanimous. 
And that's why I, I, I wrote you guys about bringing this up. Um, I do have the motion in front of me here. It's not on the screen. Go ahead, Pam, read the motion. <clears throat> the motion is, uh, well, first I've got to give, well, no, I can give the background during discussion. Grant an exception to the two out of region CFA judge sponsorship limit per show for the 44 Gotti Cat Club's January 20, uh, 22 show on, uh, excuse me, 2023, the year uh, in San, uh, San just, oh, in Italy, <laughs> and allow them to have three sponsorships in order to contract another US uh, based judge. The reason for this, they're having a six ring show and two of the region nine judges that they had originally contracted had to cancel their contracts for the show. And this is a weekend that there were no other region nine judges to be able to fill in. Um, the rest of us have been committed to judge another show in another area at, um, on that weekend. So therefore, uh, they have three guest judges, which is their max that they can have, and uh, three CFA judges. And because of the fact that, that they cannot get any CFA judges from the, from the area, they are requesting an additional $700 uh, dollar, um, from the fund. Okay, thank you, George. May I have a second, George, please? George, George seconds. Thank you, George. Uh, open for discussion. Kathy Cahoon. Hey, so I was one of the no votes on this. And the reason being is that um, the program for Region 9 is already a program that we don't do for any other region currently. Clubs have issues with judges having that are able to fulfill their contracts or or for whatever reason have to the clubs have to find a judge at the last minute and it comes as an expense and the clubs absorb that. CFA does not absorb that. We've already provided the out of region or the overseas sponsorship of $1,400. The club has already been granted $1,000 in regular show sponsorship. Um, the, we have seen instances like, for instance, the UK Cat Fan Series that brought over three judges and they managed to do that with their, without coming back to CFA for an exception. I don't know how mm. they did it, but they did not come back to CFA for an exception. The, show has already been licensed. It's been licensed with three US, US judges. So they're not really waiting for a decision here to do that. And I just don't think that it's, granted, I know that there's money left in the budget, but it sets a bad precedence. It may be what happens the next time. Are we, if we supplement region nine, because there's an additional expense to bring in a, a, an additional judge? Are we going to do that for clubs in the United States that have a bur that have that same burden? So I can't support this. Okay, Kenny. Yeah, I, I think that we have an obligation to support uh, Region Nine uh, in this endeavor. We have spent money on assisting clubs here in the United States, and uh, I'm fully support supportive of this. Okay, any additional questions or comments? Rich? Yeah. I just want to say, please do not try to compare the number of judges, uh, CFA judges that we have in Europe at this current time with the number of judges throughout North America. Um, it just, North America does not look to go to Japan or Asia or to Europe to backfill a judge. We are caught in this situation 
where it's difficult to bring in two judges from Russia because there's a, still a war going on and uh, flights from Russia are banned into the rest of Europe. Um, we have, as I said, the other available judges are all committed in another area. And I'm not going to say, oh, I, I can't judge your show now <laughs> because one of my clubs is having a problem. Can't do that. So we're trying to make sure that these clubs can at least break even when they're bringing in these judges. That's it. Okay, thank you, Pam. I'm gonna call for the vote. If you're in favor, raise your hand. Mark Hannon, Kenny Curley, George Eigenhauser, Russell Webb, Rachel Anger, Pam Delabar, Yukika Hayata, Carol Krasnowski, Mike Shelton, Paula Noble, Kathy Dunham, Annette Wilson, John Kalilla. Please lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Kathy Calhoun, Pam Mosier, Sharon Roy, Melanie Morgan, lower your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. No abstentions. Rachel, please call the vote. That's 13 yes votes, four no votes, zero abstentions. Thank you, motion passes. Pam, congratulations in the club. The club will be happy, thank you. Okay, is there any other new business? Is there any other old business? Are we gonna go back to Mary Kay now? Yeah, we will as soon as we're done with old business. Okay, we are now gonna go back to Mary Kay show rules. Um, Mary Kay and Carol, remind me what number are we on? Are we on number seven? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, Mary Kay. Mary, you're on mute. And while Mary is unmuting herself, I just wanna remind the board and Mary that the open session will adjourn at 10.05 p.m. Okay, so we only have a few minutes. So I'm gonna go really, really fast. These are holdovers from October. Um, instead of a high bar for the point minimums from national wins, we set a low bar. And the first question you guys have to think about is, do we change it in the middle of the season or not? And with that, I turn it over to Melanie. Okay, before I turn it over to Melanie, um, Carol Krasnowski has the standing motion. Mike Shelton has the standing second. Melanie, go ahead. All right, um, thanks. Uh, those who know me, uh, and the fact that I'm usually a broken record about not devaluing our awards are, again, probably surprised that this is coming from me. But I've looked at the current environment and out there and all around the globe, and especially in the international division. I've listened to concerns expressed by a large number of exhibitors as I've been out in the show halls a little more this year. And my request to consider this is a result of coming to the realization that although, thankfully, we have indeed resumed activities, this season is no means back to normal. Um, and I put quotes around normal. Um, whether we're gonna ever have a normal as we once knew it remains to be seen. But while this new normal is our reality, we need to create a workable system that incentivizes uh, exhibitors, not demoralizes. And I can't support no minimums, but I do support what Mary Kay has presented here. And I'm actually really impressed by the elegant simplicity of her proposal. We're not changing the number of rings counted. They were made at 140. We are adding a minimum number of rings with a point level that's the exact same as, as the existing RPA if you go down to the basic minimums um, required currently to reach a natural national win. So while I'm hopeful that in regions one through nine that we'll have 25 cats in each category that reach 100 rings and 40 rings and have to get to the existing ring point averages, um, I don't think it's realistic for those in the ID in China especially to have any chance at all of reaching the minimums as they stand. And when we put unrealistic goals out there, we encourage manipulation of the system. Um, I would rather see us make adjustments to the current system based on reacting to the reality of our current season than having people give up or create an environment that encourages 
falsely inflated counts. And, and finally, I understand there's some concern about changing parameters mid-season, but in this instance, uh, I think Mary Kay's addressed some of that. We're maintaining a minimum that would at least be at the existing RPA. We're maintaining the maximum number of rings counted. We're simply giving people more options. And the hope is that we get a top 25 in our categories. Um, so I'm hopeful that if this is, um, this is approved, that we'll give people something to strive for. And that will translate into more entries and increased competition. Um, so I'm hopeful the board will at least consider this. And I thank Mary Kay for putting this together. Great, thank you. George? I'm normally a vocal opponent of changing anything to do with, with the scoring in the middle of the show season. But these are different times. You know, we're just coming out of COVID. We've had some optimistic expectations as to what was going to happen. Reality is now slapping us in the face. And I think what we have to do is, is suck it up, do it this last time. But in the future, let's, let's please not change points and scoring and things in the middle of a show season once it started. But, you know, these are extraordinary times. And, and I think in this case, it's justified. Thank you, George. Carol? Um, yes, one of my biggest problems with this is changing it in the middle of the season. And it's not just midway through the season. It's eight months into the season already. We only have four months left after this, pretty much. So, um, you know, changing it now makes makes it really difficult for people who are trying to plan their their years. We're also seeing counts improving as we always do at this time of year. The counts are starting to go up in regions one through seven. And I do believe there's another proposal coming up to address China and the international division separately. So we could deal with that on in another motion. Um, I've heard from people that one of the problems they have with the board is that we're constantly changing our decisions. So um, those are my feelings about it. Thanks. Thank you, Carol. Pam Mosier. I have to say that I have to agree with Carol. Um, I think this is really late in the season. Um, I, I just, I mean, we say this every time we'll say, well, we're not going to, we're not going to change it. And then we keep doing it. And then, as George says, well, this should be the last time. Well, it never seems to be the last time. So I have to go with Carol. I, I just don't, I think it's a bad idea. Thank you, Pam. Pam Delabar. Well, surprisingly, I would support this. Uh, I don't like changes in the, in the middle of the season. You know, once we set a parameter, I want us to keep that parameter. But the um, uh, thing is, is that we're not raising points. Uh, we're lowering the, quali ah, the qualification points needed, not setting that uh, what the, the, the overall is going to be, just that minimum to qualify to even be competitive for that national win. That's why I will support this. Thank you, Pam. Kathy Cohen. I just have a question um, in that this is for all areas. So if this passes, is, does that negate the next motion or the next? Kathy, real quick, what is what is the change in the next motion that would impact this? So the, it's the China, including Hong Kong and Macau. Excluding. And it's excluding. 25 rings scored and a minimum of 1,000 points for championship, premiership, premiership, 15 rings, 250 points, kittens, 15 rings, a minimum of 500 points. So it makes the, um, the China different from the all region that is discussed in the first, it excludes China. It's a separate scoring for China. And the only change is in the premiership? Am I reading that correctly? Can I, can I comment, Rich? Yes, Mary. Okay, okay so the difference between the proposal uh, that Kathy is, is, the next proposal and the one we're currently on, the next one does not include regions one through nine, no changes there. There are no changes to championship in either China or the international in the next one. The changes are to premiership in China would be 15 rings instead of 25 and 250 points. Kittens would be the same. Household pets would be 15 rings scored and 250 points. 
So it drops from 25 rings to 15 rings for China. Now for the international area, the same thing. For premiership and the household pets, it drops from 15 rings scored. I'm sorry, it drops from 25 rings scored to 15 rings scored. So it's fewer rings scored in premiership and household pets. And that's the difference between the, the two. Well, and China has, um, I think, China has a lower point minimum, a 250 point minimum for premiership. So it, mm -hmm. it basically it equates premiership and household pets. And I'm that's why I'm not real happy about the next one, but China's not gonna make these numbers anyhow. If they can't have shows, they're not gonna make anything. So um, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you about, about China. Hey, Kathy, come on. Yeah, um, and, and I, I wouldn't, uh, want to say that China's not going to make anything. Well, if but, they have, uh, and they have hopefully, some... Mary, can I finish? I'm sorry. I didn't know I was. Hopefully, um, we've, we're hearing things now that some of the restrictions may be uh, modified in China. So they may be able to have more shows, but they've lost the momentum of the first eight months. And that's why we want to keep people incentivized to try and get recognized. If we just assume that they're they're not, you know, they can't play in this in this field, then that's that. There's no motivation to go to shows. We want to make something att attainable for these regions or these areas that with COVID and the governmental restrictions are at a disadvantage. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Matthew? Hi, thank you. Yeah, I think this is a, a, a very timely proposal because as we know, China start to open up. And of course, the rest of uh, international in Asia, we already having a lot of shows. Um, while the, 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 this is uh, encouraging, but at the same time, it really simulates the competition I believe the, the winning cash will still go will, will still score way higher than this minimum. But as uh, Kathy said, this encourage more people to, to compete for the maybe not the top five, but the second half of the of the winners, um, because they can see the possibility uh, of having more winners in, in the actual ladder. Um, I, I think I mean in Hong Kong alone, because with the associate judging program coming out. Uh, hopefully they could they could be available for the last few months of the season. I think this scoring will simulate uh, a lot of shows uh, towards the last three months of the show seasons and will keep us very busy. Already I can see that people are uh, booking judges and uh, 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 for like January all the way to uh, April already in the rest of our ID. So I, I strongly hope that uh, we could, um, again, vote for this again. Uh, I think it will really make uh, it will be game changing for ID. Thank you. John? I can only comment that from now, the end of December and January, there are five scheduled shows and there may be more. They're requesting more and more shows. Um, you may be kind of surprising. There are three shows. The first one has 67 cats. The last two, 225 and 223. I receive a brief summary. There's nothing unusual because I remember shows that I judge. 173 blue with the short hair is not the case. They all spread out, nothing unusual. I, I think that we are coming back in China. People are very enthusiastic, especially household pets. The um, second show, they have 43. And then the last one, they have 30 some. They're getting big in household pet competition right now, too. I, th I think it's a, uh, hopefully everything will go well. That's what I would say. Thank you, John. Mary? Oh, I just uh, have a question about procedure here. So if the first one passes and, and people want the lower number of rings for China in the international area, and if they pass, if you pass the second one, it would override that portion of the first one. Is that what will happen? Yes. Well, somebody's got to correct me if I, if I'm wrong. 
if the first one passes and then the second one is presented, the second one says no changes, which I hope it's referring to what potentially could pass. Would, would no changes refer to the prior motion? So it's no changes from the prior motion. We, that's what we got to ask Kathy Calhoun. Yes, Mary is correct. It's no changes to the prior motion. Okay, so it's not, the, it's not the no probably, changes to the existing. Yeah. Okay, the, so you, the, that was my initial question because this motion says all Aries. Correct. The second motion is just for China. So my understanding is if you vote yes on the first one, if you pass the first one, which is not a foregone conclusion, but if you pass the first one and you pass the second one, then the parts related to China and the international in the second one would override the first one. Yes. And All I right. see John Kalila shaking his head yes. That's my understanding, uh, okay. Kelly, do you agree? Yes, I do. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you, Kenny. So basically what Mary is, uh, what's being created here is a minimum to be scored towards. Yes. We're not really, and then it just becomes a competition of points gathered over the course of the season. Uh, so my question would be, um, is there any way we can, uh, I know Mary has done some private polls on this. Is there any way we can ask our constituents what they feel about this? Mary? I, I did ask a very, it's a, and I, I didn't say anything for, for time, but I did a very Ooh. unscientific poll on Facebook. The, uh, the, and, and, it, and you have to take this with a grain of salt because people sometimes they don't really understand the question. I asked if people were opposed to changing the point minimums mid-season. And there are people that I know want no point minimums, but were opposed to changing it mid-season in that question. So I'm not really sure that they really got the, the point. Um, it was overwhelming almost that, that no, they don't want changes mid-season, but they do support, a lot of the very same people support making changes in the international area and the and China. And I don't see how you can change it in the international area in China and not lower it everywhere. I mean, that's that's a problem. So this is why I'm saying it wasn't a scientific poll. Thank you, Mary. George? I think we're hitting a hard stop here. We either need to vote on this or, or table a discussion till later. But that's correct. Um, Carol? Are we going to move forward with the vote or do you want to table it? Um, I think we should just move forward with the vote at this point. Very good. I'm going to call for the vote. If you're in favor, raise your hand. Melanie Morgan, Pam Delabar, Kathy Calhoun, George Eigenhauser, Kathy Dunham, Mike Shelton, Russell Webb, Sharon Roy, Rachel Anger, Annette Wilson, John Kalilla. Paula Noble, Yukika Hayata, lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Mark Cannon, Pam Mosier, Carol Krasnowski, Kenny Curley. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. No abstentions, Rachel. Please announce the vote. That's 13, yes, four, no, zero abstentions. Motion passes. I know we have a hard stop, but I'm not sure we cannot move forward with the next one. I don't have anything to say about it except what I already said. Right. So. Uh, Carol and Mike Shelton, you continued with your motion, standing motion and second? Yes. Mike? Yes. Thank you. Melanie? Kathy, I want to clarify that this is what the um, International Division is recommending for that area. Kathy? It is. We, uh, we met uh, a Zoom call and discussed this at length, and it is the recommendation. Thank you. 
Seeing no other hands up, I'm calling for the vote. If you're in favor, raise your hand. George Eigenhauser, Melanie Morgan, Kathy Calhoun, John Kalilla, Kenny Curley, Kathy Dunham, Paula Noble, Rachel Anger, Anger, Russell Webb, Sharon Roy, Mike Shelton, Carl Krasnowski, Mark Hannon, Kim Delabar, Yukika Hayata, Annette Wilson. Lower your hand, Pam Mosier. Lower your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. If you're an abstention, raise your hand. No, no votes, no abstentions. Rachel, announce the vote. That was unanimous with 17 yes votes. Very good, thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Mary Kay, thank you. Carol? Uh, yes, words? I'd just like to make a motion to table the rest of these show rule changes and bring them back in February. George seconds. Okay, any objections? Seeing no objections, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Carol and George. Thank you, Mary Kay. Thank you, Carol. Um, it is 10-10. Meeting is adjourned.